Hey guys, I've been using Squeezebox from Slim Devices and Logitech for a while and both of them died and uh, I want to build my own uh, flag player based on uh, Raspberry Pi. So today we're going to see how to do that. Here is my Raspberry Pi 3 board. This is uh, probably two years old and I got it from Amazon for around 30 bucks. Uh, if you're not sure what's the model number of your board, it's right here. Uh, so it's Pi 3 model B plus and I'm going to use a 32 GB uh, card uh, for this one. So let's get started. So if you Google Raspberry Pi based uh, flag player, you will find several softwares available. Uh, most of them should be open source and should be free. I'm going to try Rune Audio today and this one supports uh, DLNA as uh, most of my flag files are sitting in a NAS storage. So you go to devices and you pick the software build based on your device type. Uh, mine is Raspberry Pi 3 and download build. So this build is dated 2016 and it did not work with uh, Pi 3 model B+. All I got was a uh, rainbow screen and nothing happened after that. So after going through help and uh, Rune Audio forum, I found uh, what you need is a 0.5 version. I will post this link uh, in my description. So you can uh, go through this and uh, download the image from here. I already have the file downloaded and it's a zip file. So you need to unzip uh, the file using uh, 7-zip or uh, any other unzip tools. So here's my image. Let's launch the disk imager and uh, make sure that you have the right uh, device uh, loaded. You don't want to accidentally overwrite some of your other drives. So my SD card is on H drive and you go browse for the image that you downloaded. So it's uh, here and then you click right. Yes, all right. Uh, it's going to take some time to finish. Okay, right, successful. Then all you have to do is unplug it and plug it to your uh, Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, you can ignore this uh, Windows uh, prompting to format cancel. Everything connected now. Let's turn the power on. If you see the green light, that's probably a good sign because it's actually reading your disk. So device is powered on and uh, that's what you're going to see. And let's uh, launch a Rune Audio and see what happens. Let's go ahead and uh, launch the player. It's HTTP colon slash, uh, slash Rune Audio, just like that. And if everything went well, you should see a player. So far, we are good. And the next step is to connect this player to your NAS. To do that, you go to menu and click on sources. I just did mine here. Uh, and if you want to add your mount, you go click uh, add new mount. You can type uh, pretty much whatever you want. That's the name of your uh, store. And uh, IP address in my case is 192.168.0.107. The file path is uh, public shared music slash flag. And if you uh, save mount, if everything is right, it should turn green. And uh, there you go. And uh, it should start refreshing. I already did mine and refreshed my uh, library. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the one that I just added. OK, so uh, let's go to uh, queue. There is nothing in my queue. Uh, browse library. And if you go to network mounts, you would see, see you would see your uh, NAS that you just added. So DIY tech is my NAS. And here is everything I have in my NAS. It's time to test. Let's uh, play a sample song. And uh, to test, I connected my headset to the audio output just to make sure that I can listen to the song. And at this point, the display still says this, and you can easily change that. You go to menu, settings, and turn the local browser on. So when you turn the local browser on, it should uh, 
display what you see. Let me go back. There you go. Let's also launch an app, a Rune Audio, and it should display the same thing. Yes. Okay. There it is. So we are all set. Now it's time to configure the Wi-Fi. It's still hooked up to Ethernet. So to do that, you go to a menu uh, network and uh, that's your Ethernet. That's your uh, wireless and double click. And that should bring all your uh, Wi-Fi networks. Okay. Now that we have a working setup, uh, let's hook up this uh, iFiBerry DigiPlus uh, to the Raspberry Pi player so we get a digital output. And once this is done, uh, we are done with the player. And this is like uh, around 30 bucks in Amazon as well. So this sits on top of this, like that. And uh, don't just unplug or uh, switch the device off. You have to go shut down your uh, room audio first. So turn off and okay. And then let's power off the device. So I have the stands hooked up and you just uh, scroll it to the base. Let me focus it. And then uh, this goes on top of this. So it sits on uh, perfectly on top just like that and then let's finish it off with this tiny screws here so it's hooked up I'm gonna turn the power on so the DG plus board is plugged in and it's still not enabled though so you need to go to menu settings and in the IS kernel, you need to go pick your uh, board. So my case, it's a uh, iFi Berry Digi Plus, and it says that uh, you know you need to reboot and then configure the MPDE configuration. So let's go ahead apply settings. Reboot. Okay, it's back. So let's go to uh, menu MPD and you should see your audio output interface as iFiberry DG. So that's good. So uh, let's go play a song. When I play the song, you should see the optical output uh, turning on. Uh, there it is. So we know that uh, the DG board is uh, working. Now it's time to hook up the system uh, to your uh, music system. I hope this video is helpful and introduces you to Pi based uh, music player. This setup cost me around uh, 60 bucks, uh, 30 bucks for the main Pi board and another 30 bucks for the optional uh, DG Plus board. There are several softwares available for the player. Uh, you can pick and choose which one works for you. The setup should be uh, same as I show here and uh, thanks for watching.